الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد احبت في الله in a beautiful treatise which is actually an explanation or a translation of a hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained by Al Hafiz Ibn Rajib Al Hanbali, Rahmatullahi Rahmatin Wasia, in his book Jama Al Alum Wa Hikam. And this is a book which explains the 40 hadith of Imam An Nawawi. And so this is just a study of one of those hadith, and it is entitled Three Ways to Forgiveness. So it's very important for us all because everyone needs forgiveness. And the Prophet said, Kullu ibn Adam khatta, wa khayna khatta'ina tawabun. All the children of Adam commit sins. And the best of those who sin are those who repent. And so, <laughs> alhamdulillah. So, we will take a look at this treatise and try to benefit, make benefit from it. One thing that's very important as we begin this treatise is to talk about Toba. Toba is something that uh, the Prophet used to make Toba over a hundred times a day. And Toba, it's very important for us to know how to make forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a difference between istighfar, seeking forgiveness from Allah, when we say istighfar, we say istighfar Allah, istighfar Allah, and between that and Toba. So before we get into this treatise, I wanted us to benefit from a fayda from the ulama that Imam Anawi mentioned in his, his, uh, his book, uh, Riyadh al-Salihin, about Toba. He said, the scholar said, so look at this, this is a benefit right off the get-go, to show an alam, a, a, a major imam of the religion, Imam Anawi, <coughs> refer to the scholars. So it shows how important it is, it is for us, uh, you know, in our beginning, uh, beginning stages of knowledge, or how little knowledge that we have, to always try to refer back to the, to the ulama, to the scholars. And this is why some of the people before us, they used to say, when someone would say something about the religion, they would say, Men sabaka bihada qawl. Who said that before you? You know, who, you know, you don't want to just make up things about the religion. You have to speak based on ilm. And the ilm is, قَالَ Allah, قَالَ Rasul. Allah said, and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, and to know what the scholars of the religion, the classical scholars, what they said, the salaf of this ummah. So Imam Anawi said, scholars said, it is necessary to repent from every sin. If the offense involves the right of a law, meaning like Tawheed and things like this, not a human, then there are three conditions to be met in order that repentance be accepted by a law. So if it is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are three conditions for making Tawbah. First, to desist from committing the sin. That means you stop the sin. So for example, if you're watching Haram, you're smoking Haram, you're doing something Haram that you know of, to stop. That's the first act of Tawbah, the first way to, to make Tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second step of making Tawbah, we call it a shart or shurut, uh, is to feel sorry for doing it. So you should feel sorrow that you committed the sin. And the third condition for making Tawbah is to decide not to re do, recommit that sin. They say azima to have determination in your heart that I'm not going to go back to that sin. I've stopped that sin, I'm not going back to it. So those are the three conditions of Toba. The three conditions are what? Stop the sin. Secondly, feel sorry that you committed it. Thirdly, have determination in your heart to not return to that sin. But then Imam Anoa, he said, any repentance failing to meet any of these three conditions would not be sound, meaning it wouldn't be accepted, that all of the, you need all of those conditions to have your toba accepted. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins. I mean, ya Rabbil Alameen. And then he said, 
But if the sin involves a human's right, meaning someone's right, it requires a fourth condition. So it means you have to do all three of those plus this fourth condition. He said to absolve oneself from such right, for example, if it is property, he should return it to its rightful owner. If it is slandering or backbiting, one should ask the pardon of the offended. That means if you your sin involves someone else, for example, you were backbiting, you were speaking about so-and-so, sister so-and-so, she's like this, brother so-and-so did this sin, and you spread it around the community. You just want to, just for the sake of spreading evil. If you make Toba from that, you have to meet all those conditions. Stop spreading that backbiting and slander, feel sorry about it, and decide not to redo it again. And then the fourth thing is you should try to ask forgiveness from that person because it involves their haq, it involves their right. So those are the conditions of toba, and which is very relevant to this hadith. Uh, those are some of the important things we wanted to mention. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab kareem about toba, qala subhana, utubu illallahi jami'an ayyul mu'minun la'allakum tuflihun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab kareem, and all of you make repentance. You know, repent to Allah. Tubu Allah. Make Toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't make Toba to the graves. We don't make Toba to the dead sheikhs or the living sheikhs uh, or, or to anyone. Your Toba, your repentance is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we're better and better off than, for example, the Catholics. They go to their priest and the priest sits in a dark uh, chamber and then they say, Father, I have sinned. This is how they make Toba because they, they feel that they have too many sins to go to Allah. But the mu'min goes only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's Tawheed. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded. He said, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ All of you make Toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَيُّ uh, الْمُؤْمِنُونَ You believers. Because this is the way the believers do it. لَعَلَّكُمْ uh, تُفْلِحُونَ In order that you will be successful. If you want success, make Toba to Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, Estaghfiru rabbukum thumma tubu ilayh. In Surah Al-Hud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And seek forgiveness from your Lord, and then repent to Him. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a distinction between Tawbah and Estaghfar. You know, seeking forgiveness, just seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and doing the actual act of repentance. And so we should do it do both as much as possible. Say astaghfir Allah wa atubu ilayk. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we can have al kareem. Ya yuladina amanu tubu ilallahi tawbatin nasuha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we can have al kareem. O you who believe, turn to Allah with sincere repentance. So your sin, your tawbah should be a tawbah sadiq or tawbah nasuha. Which means sincere, that you're that it's real, that you don't just make toba or uh, stung for the law, and then you still smoke your cigarette, you still smoke some weed, you still drink, you still listen to music, you still do this, but you should do your best, not, do your best, and follow those steps. Feel sorrow, leave the sin, and uh, be determined not to return back to that sin. That's the sincere toba. That's toba nusoha. So getting on to our treaties. So, uh, it says the three ways to forgiveness. And the hadith goes as such. So, the hadith is, قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا أَنَسَ بِنْ مَالِكْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَلْعَنْهُ قَالْ سَمِعْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَقُولْ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى يَا إِبْنَ آدَمْ إِنَّكَ مَا دَعَوْتَنِي وَرَجُوتَنِي غَفَرْتُ لَكَ عَلَى مَا كَانَ فِيكَ وَلَا أُبَالِي يَا أَبْنَ آدَمْ لَوْ بَلَغَتْ ذُنُوبَكَ عَنَّانَ السَّمَاءَ ثُمَّ اسْتَغْفَرْتَنِي غَفَرْتَ لَكَ وَلَا أُبَالِي يَا أَبْنَ آدَمْ إِنَّكَ لَوْ أَتَيْتَنِي بِقَرَابِ الْأَرْضِ خَطَايَا ثُمَّ لَكَيْتَنِي لَا تُشْرِكُ بِشَيْءٍ لَا أُتَيْتُكَ بِكَرَابِهَا مَغْفِرًا This uh, is a hadith in uh, Tirmidhi. 
in this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu uh, alaihi wasallam, is a hadith Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said, "I heard Allah's Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying that Allah said." So this is called hadith of Qudsi. Hadith Qudsi means it's a sacred hadith. Means the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's not the Quran. But the Prophet ﷺ reported this hadith or narrated this hadith on Allah the Almighty. But it is different than the Quran. It is not the Quran. It is still a hadith, but it's called hadith, the sacred hadith. Hadith al-Qudsi. So Anas ibn Malik radiallahu said, I heard Allah's Messenger وسلم, saying, Allah Ta'ala said, O son of Adam, as long as you call on me, and hope in me, I will forgive you for whatever sins you have, and I will not mind. O son of Adam, if your sins were to reach the clouds in the sky, and then were you to ask for my forgiveness, I would forgive you, and I would not mind. O son of Adam, if you were to come to me with sins as much as the earth, and then you meet me not worshiping anything else along with me, I would come to you with as much forgiveness. Imam Ibn Rajab said about this hadith, he said, This hadith of Anas radiallahu ta'ala uh, contains three ways to obtain forgiveness. Three ways to obtain forgiveness. He said the first way, which is hopeful supplication. <clears throat> he said the first way is hopeful supplication. Calling upon Allah is something we have been commanded to do and have been promised a response as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أَدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord said, call upon me and I will answer you. So that means by having tawheed, worshiping Allah alone, supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, this is uh, a way of uh, getting your dua answered and it's a way of getting forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first way by making hopeful supplication. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and your Lord said, call upon me. So Allah asks us to call upon him, supplicate to him, and I will answer you. Anything you need, ask Allah. Seek forgiveness from Allah. Make tawbah to Allah. Uh, the Imam then said, also in the four famous collections of Hadith, and Nisai, Abu Dawood, and Al-Tirmidhi, and Ibn Majah, and Nu'man Ibn Bashir, radiallahu ta'ala, and who narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, inna du'a huwa ibadah. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, supplication, it is definitely a form of worship. Du'a is ibadah. When you supplicate, it's ibadah. And this is why Ahlul Sunnah supplicates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ahlul Shirk, even people who say, La ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah, they say this, they say the shahada, but they supplicate to the dead, some of the people. You would not believe this. You guys lived in Sheher. And Sheher, some of those masajid, there was a masjid right across the street from Masjid Tawheed. There's a big masjid when you go to the beach, if you kind of remember. The first masjid, actually some of those masjids I heard, they had graves in them. They had graves in them. That means the people would pray to that dead person in there. That's one of the types of ibadah that they did. What they were doing was ibadah, but it was ibadah muharram. It was ibadah shirkiyah. It was shirk. Because you can't supplicate to Allah. You can't pray to Allah. You can't pray to the grave. That grave can't help them. The, the person in the grave couldn't even help themselves. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, a dua hu ibadah. So since supplication is ibadah, supplication goes to who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Because if you make supplication to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's shirk. And it's the major shirk which takes you out of the fold of Islam. And then he said, however, supplication is only guaranteed a response when its conditions are fulfilled and anything that prevents the response is avoided. This is the statement of Imam Ibn Rajab. He said a response may be delayed or withheld because some of its conditions are not met. Or because of some things other than uh, because of some other things or etiquettes that prevent one's supplications from being answered. That means our supplication. Sometimes we supplicate to Allah. Maybe it's not answered for some particular reason. Sometimes things stop our supplications from being answered. He said one of the greatest of these conditions, meaning the condition to have your du'a accepted, 
is that the caller should put his whole heart into a supplication and have certain hope that Allah will answer him, as in the hadith of Abi Huraira, radiallahu ta'anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ed'u Allah wa antum muqinun bil ijaba wa'lam wa wa'lamu an Allah la yastajiba dua dua'in min qalbin ghafilin la laha. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, call upon Allah while you are certain of the response. And know that Allah does not answer the supplication from a careless, unattentive heart. That means when you supplicate, focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Know Allah will help you because you guys are mu'mineen. You guys are believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You spend all your days, you, five times a day, you're praying to Allah. You're worshiping Allah alone. You're not worshiping the graves. You're not worshiping the dead. You're not worshiping Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam, And you're not worshiping Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam. You're worshiping only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for that reason, have hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your supplication. And then the imam said, for, for this point that one should be certain of a response. The servant has been forbidden to say in his supplication, and he mentions... Uh, None of you should say, Oh Allah, forgive me if you want. This is called ta'liq uh, or istithna, uh, ta'liq or uh, in ibadah. Anyhow, none of, you, none of you should say, Oh Allah, forgive me if you want, but be certain that Allah will forgive you. Seek forgiveness from Allah. Don't say Allah, insha don't make dua and say inshallah. Never do that. Make dua with certainty that Allah will, because you're asking Allah. Oh Allah, please forgive me. Oh Allah, please increase my risk. Asking Allah. Don't say, Oh Allah, please increase my risk, inshallah. Or if you will. But Allah has his own will, independent of your talab and your request. So ask Allah alone. So he said, none of you should say, Oh Allah, forgive me if you want. Oh Allah, have mercy on me if you want. Instead, he should be certain and determined in asking because certainty no one forces or compels a law anyway. So that's very important. A person should also not be too hasty and therefore stop calling on a law if the particular response he wants does not come immediately. So just because your dua didn't get answered today uh, or very in a short period of time, don't be hasty. Still hope that Allah is going to answer it and keep supplicating to Allah. This is one of the things that could prevent supplication from being answered because you give up. You gave up in your heart so Allah gives up on you and doesn't answer your supplication. The servant should not lose hope in having his supplication answered even if time passes. Certainly Allah loves those who are persistent and constantly supplicate to him. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and we'll continue on where we stop in the next sitting. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.